How you doing guys, welcome to another video. This is topic 11, which looks at identification using some techniques for organic compounds. And in this volume, we talk about the mass spectrometer. So volume one, what is mass spectrometry? We look at the types of analysis we can do with the mass spec, and we look at the fragmentation and how we produce the spectrum. The IB understandings, we need to talk about degree of unsaturation or index of hydrogen deficiency. That will be at the end. That allows us to work out how many rings or double bonds are in a structure. We also need to look at the mass spec and how it can be used to determine the identity or the structure of a compound. Um, we need to be able to determine the IHD and we need to be able to work out some features of a molecule from percentage composition and the mass spec data. Text ref 548, 553, have a look at it. So analysis, analysts have been identifying and characterizing unknown substances using instruments for a number of years. They ask themselves two questions, you know, what is in the sample, the qualitative analysis? They ask themselves, how much of that particular compound is present in the sample? That's the quantitative analysis. Other techniques are interested in the structural analysis. So that means we're looking at the location of functional groups in a molecule or the presence of different types of bonds in a molecule. On the right hand side, I've got three analysis of a US bank note. And what they did is they passed um, the contents of the bank note through a solvent and then all of the things on the bank note dissolved. They passed it through the first one, which is a HPLC, which separated it into its compounds. Now, one of the peaks at 6.39 minutes, it appeared on some notes, but not on others. So they run the mass spec of that peak uh, through the device and they got a fingerprint of the device. And then they come up with the suspected compound. They matched it up due to its fingerprint and they had a library of possibilities. Anyway, I want you to have a think. What do you think is that compound? What could that compound have been? Um, and I'll tell you at the end of the volume. So the mass spec was used in topic one to determine the relative atomic masses and abundances of isotopes. It's also used to analyze molecules, particularly organic molecules, because it breaks them apart into ionized fragments. These are detected and a spectrum is produced, which gives us information about the molar mass and the structure. The most important thing for you at the moment is the molar mass. When we use the mass spec, we're able to determine the molar mass of a compound, and then that allows us with other information to determine the structure and the chemical formula. I've got an image on the right hand side of the mass spec. You don't need to know any of the operations of it. That was in one of the guidance points. If you wanna have a read of it, go over and have a read, but it's just about analyzing the spectrum. So how does the mass spec work? Well, we bombard a sample with high energy electrons. We essentially shoot an electron at a molecule and this ionizes the molecule and they break up into all of these tiny positively charged fragments. Those positively charged fragments are accelerated through the instrument and an electric field is varied um, and separated by a magnetic field according to their different mass to charge ratios. And we produce a spectrum like in the top right hand corner. It looks like a little city with different peaks and different abundances. All of the peaks in that spectrum will be positively charged. They're all positively charged ions and they have a different mass to charge ratio. Generally in IB, the mass to charge ratio will be positive one. So we assume that all of those ions have a positive one charge. The abundance just indicates the stability or the amount of those ions hitting the detector. The higher the peak, the more stable that sample. So here's the mass spectrum of pentane, which was the one on the other page. And there's a few things that we need to know about this spectrum. We need to know what are the fragment ions, the base peak, and the molecular ions. 
Now the molecular iron is generally the biggest peak in the spectrum. The base peak is the one with 100% abundance, and then we describe all of the others as being fragment ions. So the base peak is given 100% intensity. It corresponds to the fragment that is the most stable out of all of the positively charged fragments. The molecular ion is probably the most important to you. It's the heaviest ion, and it's likely to be the molecular ion, which will tell you the molecular mass. The molecular ion will break down into the other fragments, which produce the fragment ions. So our sample is in, introduced into the mass spectrometer. We shoot high energy electrons off it, and we're able to knock another electron off the molecule. So we have our, mo our molecule M. We shoot our electrons at the molecule, and those electrons are strong enough to knock an electron, another electron off, producing our molecular ion, which is given the symbol M+. Those ions are unstable and they break apart into smaller ions. In the simplest case, a molecular ion or an ion will break apart into a fragment ion, which is positively charged, and an uncharged free radical. The fragment ion reaches the detector, but the uncharged free radical gets sucked out of the side of the instrument. So if we needed to write the ionization of pentane in the mass spectrometer, we would have C5H12 gas, all of these things will take place in the gas phase. We shoot an electron on it, off at it, so we get a positively charged pentane and two electrons. The C5H12 plus will be our molecular ion. So ethanoic acid, another we introduce it into a sample, we can shoot electrons at that and we can produce the parent peak CH3COOH positive at a mass to charge of 60. So that is the M plus ion. Now that ion may be unstable and it can break apart into all the other peaks on the spectrum. We have a peak down there at 15. So 15 would be the production of a CH3, a methyl ion. So our molecular ion could break apart into CH3 and then what's left over, well it's a COOH and that will be uncharged. We always have a positive ion and an uncharged free radical. The CH, COOH fragment at 45 is formed from ethanoic acid breaking down into the positively charged COOH and then we have an uncharged methyl group. That uncharged methyl group will not reach the detector, but the COOH positive will, and that is that peak there in the spectrum. We could also go ahead, go and start working out what the fragment peaks are by looking at the loss. So if we look at the molecular ion, we can see that going from there, we would have a loss of a CH3. To go to the base peak, well, we would have a loss of an OH. So if we lost an OH, that would be a loss of about a mass to charge of 17, and we could then work out what has been produced and what has been lost. So a quick summary on fragmentation. The molecular ion is the loss of one electron from the complete molecule. The M plus one peak shows the number of carbon atoms present in a molecule. If the M plus one peak has an abundance of 5%, then we have five carbon atoms. If we have an M plus 2 peak, we might have some chlorine or bromine. A molecular ion of odd mass suggests the presence of nitrogen. So on this spectrum we have an M plus and then we have this tiny little peak after the M plus. So this is an M plus plus 2. That plus 2 indicates that we might have chlorine or bromine. And in fact this was a spectrum with chlorine, so if you ever think you've got something with chlorine you will see a peak at M plus plus two. You'll also notice some other things about the molecules as well. They might have an odd number, which suggests that we have bromine, and then we can all, sorry, nitrogen. And if we have a look at the M plus one peak, that small percentage gives us the number of carbons in the molecule. It's usually quite a small peak. Let's have a look at the spectrum of ethanol, which has the molecular ion CH3, CH2OH positive. 
and then we want to try and interpret the spectrum. So if we had to write the formation of the molecular ion, we would get ethanol, add an electron to it, shoot it with the electron gun to form the positively charged CH3CH2OH ion and two electrons. Now, the molecular ion will be the, the largest peak in the spectrum, so our M plus would be at 46. Our base peak is the peak that has 100% absorbance, so it will be there at 31. Now we need to go through and work out what these other fragments are. So we have a CH3 plus, that has a mass to charge of 15. Some of the other things we can start to work out, well, 46 all the way down to 31, that is a loss of 15. So a loss of 15 could be a CH3 group. So if we've lost a CH3 group from our ethanol, our base peak will be CH2OH, and that will be the peak there. If we have a look at the next peak, okay, well, if we know that a CH3, CH2 weighs 29, so that will be that peak there, and a peak at 27 would be a CH3 and a carbon. There are some typical fragments that you need to remember according to the IB. They're on the right-hand side. We've covered a few of them there today, and we've had a look at some other ones earlier in the video. Okay, the degree of unsaturation, the IHD, we need to be able to calculate the IHD. It gives us a useful clue to the structure of the molecule once its formula is known. Does it have double bonds? Does it have rings? To calculate the IHD, we use the molecular formula. We add the number of halogens to the number of hydrogens, we ignore the number of oxygens, and we subtract the number of nitrogens from the number of hydrogens. So to work out our IHD, we'll start with the one on the right. We would pretend to add the two bromines to the hydrogens, giving us C9H18. Now that appears to be a saturated hydrocarbon, so it would have an IHD of zero. For the second one, we have an IHD of C2H6. We ignore the oxygens, add the hydrogen. So again, that appears to be like an alkane. It is saturated. The last one, it's a little bit challenging. We subtract the number of nitrogens from the number of hydrogens, leaving us with C6H4. Now this appears to have a lot of double bonds, a lot of unsaturation. So the easiest way to think about it is if it was saturated, it would need to have 14 hydrogens, or it would need to have another 10. So that means we must have a large number of double bonds. So it's missing 10 hydrogens, and for each two hydrogens, we have one double bond. So that means that molecule would have five double bonds. That could be a ring and a double bond, or it could be just five double bonds. Some top tips for volume one. Make sure you know the molecular ion because that's the one that's gonna give you a clue to the molar mass. We always form a positive ion and an uncharged free radical. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, and that compound that they found on the banknotes, that was actually cocaine. Hope you thought about that, and I'll see you next time.